welcome to the History of Revision podcast on the Miners' Strike of 1984. The background to this was that there had been problems with strikes in the 1970s and even the 1960s, and they brought down indirectly the last two governments. Strikes had even caused Thatcher problems in, early on in her um, premiership, and she'd given in to the 1981 dispute as she wasn't prepared to deal with it at that time. There was sympathy for the failing in inefficient industries such as the coal mines but it wasn't enough they were taking money away from the public purses the union's job was to look after the workers in every industry and this had fueled inflation in the 70s as they as they ensured higher wages for their members coal was expensive to mine and inefficient maybe some would say because it needed investment but it was running at a loss employment acts brought in by Norman Tebbit were to forbid mass picketing like at the Saltley Works in 1972 uh, to put a ban on closed shops and to make a ballot compulsory and make unions liable for any compensation and these happened employment acts happened in 1980 and 1982 the government began stockpiling coal and coke power stations and importing more coal they even made sure that helicopter sites were available at power stations Thatcher had been given a huge mandate in the 1983 election to act as she saw fit. She started off with putting a ban on union membership at GCHQ in 1984 and she brought Ian McGregor in to do the same as he had done in the steel industry, i.e. sort them out with the result of heavy job losses. There are arguments for closing the pits, or there were anyway. The mines were running at a loss and despite if you think Margaret Thatcher was only closing them to cause um, a confrontation with the unions, could the mines ever recover? There's also the argument to do it then and use the money that they were saving from the, the running at a loss to give redundancies instead. The arguments against were that in the, if the government invested in mining it could be profitable and the only reason for closing the pit should be that, that if there is in no coal in it at all, that's what Scargo believed in anyway. There's the social consequences arguments against it and also the fact that redundancy costs just as much as keeping the pit going. Also the fact that communities were destroyed by the closure of the pits because that's what a lot of them were basically about, the mines. That's why they were there. So look at the dispute itself in 1984 and 85. The government claimed neutrality but backed the National Coal Board, the NCB. Although Thatcher did later admit direct government intervention, including averting the uh, NACODS strike. There were violent scenes, for example at Orgreave, uh, and secondary picketing. The NUM were fined £200,000 for contempt of court. There was some support for the miners and there were charitable handouts, um, but eventually they drifted back to work and ended up losing. Why did they lose though? Some people said it that Scargler was too abrasive, the fact that he was a Marxist, Marxist revolutionary um, and alienated other mining unions and he was easily demonised by the government. The fact that they started the struggle in spring and it was a mild winter didn't help um, and Nottinghamshire miners continued to work and they set up their own union, the Union of Democratic Miners, the UDM. Scargo made the mistake of refusing a ballot, which made them look undemocratic. But then again, he had lost three other previous ballots, so he probably would have lost this one, which is why he didn't have one. There was a lack of support from other unions around the country. The government preparations meant they were well ordered to deal with the strike, and the Employment Act meant the law was on their side. Labour and Neil Kinnock were weak on the issue, giving support for the miners, but condemning their use of violence. The police were a lot more effective in the 1984 miners strike as they had been given new equipment, they would had experience and they had been training the correct tactics to deal with the miners which they hadn't in 1972 and 74. As an external reason in that coal was not that important anymore, it was only now 20% of Britain's power that came from coal. And although some people did support the miners, there was a lack of general public support. So what was the impact of the strike? The nation was shot with the violence. The north-south divide widened. There was a feeling of lawlessness which went hand in hand with the other 1985 riots. It cost the country overall £2 billion and 
pits closed earlier than planned, which meant the end of mining communities, high male unemployment, women became breadwinners, and it led to ill health and drug and alcohol abuse uh, amongst the men who were unemployed and a lot of movement away from the area. Between 1979 and 1990, the mining industry went from 200,000 men down to 60,000 men. The miners' strike convinced people that strikes are outdated. Union membership had fell down to two-thirds of the 1979 level by 1990. New trade unions started accepting no strikes agreements with their employers and became more democratic. The days lost in 1979 strikes was 29.5 million days to only 1.9 million in 1990. It made Thatch even more confident in what she was doing, but it didn't actually bring about an improvement in the polls for that for her. Let's have a look at the historical interpretation on this. And this is only a small amount. Lynch says that the government deliberately encouraged the showdown to crush unions as they were now well prepared. Rowe says that critics blame Thatcher for a politicisation of the police. He also says more pits were closed because of the strikes than if the miners had actually made negotiations with the government. Thatcher called the miners the enemy within, which didn't get on too well at all. She made sure she drew comparisons between Heath and Callaghan and herself and how she dealt with the miners and they hadn't. The UDM accused Scargill of caring more about politics than jobs. Scargill called them traitors. P Jenkins and D Smith believed that Thatcher's greatest impact on the economy was her reduction of union power. Tony Benn called it pure fascism. Ian Gilmore, who was a conservative, if a wet one, says it caused only confrontation and unemployment. And Patrick Walsh Atkins says union leaders were marginalised. You'll be able to find a hell of a lot more if you just ask anybody on the minor strike or Google it. That's it from me though. Thank you. Bye-bye.